What's up everyone, Jay's Two Cents here, and this is finally the day, especially for AMD fans, or those of you just wanting to see some competition going on in the whole PC CPU space, because today is the official, well, pre-order day, for Ryzen. And we've got three SKUs to talk about with more SKUs promised to be released in the near future. And even though I was not at the AMD event uh, and I have not been hands-on with any of these CPUs yet, I think it's a pretty interesting perspective to be able to talk about pre-ordering because you can actually pre-order this and I'm being asked a lot on whether or not you should pre-order it. So I'm gonna kind of deduce the information here as best I can to help you make the decision of whether or not you should pre-order uh, because this, this is pretty interesting. Now, as of February 22nd, you could pre-order these CPUs uh, from AMD. There's, there's three Ryzen 7 CPUs, 1800X, 1700X, and a 1700. And all three of these are eight core 16 thread uh, CPUs, which is a big, big deal because that puts this directly competing with the X99 lineup from Intel because the 1800X is priced at $499 official for AMD. Uh, that's Amazon pricing anyway. So $499 for an eight core 16 thread CPU. Now that one's designed to kind of compete directly against the 6900K, but that's just under half the price of it. Now we also have the 1700X priced at 399, uh, which is aiming directly at competing with the Intel 6800K, which is a six core 12 thread CPU. So for less, you actually get more cores and more threads with IPC improvements. We'll talk about it a little bit, which is instructions per clock where AMD has always suffered with that. Uh, but also rounding up the bottom of the three is the 1700 at $329. Again, an eight core 16 thread CPU, but that's priced more to kind of compete against the 7700K which is a four core eight thread CPU and not even on the X99 lineup, that's just on mainstream Z270. Now I think one of the coolest things about these new CPUs is it's kind of a reinvigorated some of the more motherboard manufacturers where over time AMD motherboards never seem to get the same amount of love that the Intel motherboards did, uh, especially with a lot of the additional features. I mean, USB type C and stuff finally made its way to AMD motherboards, but the chipset was very old and outdated. The 990FX was what, 2011, I wanna say 2010, around there. So we are long in the tooth when it comes to the current chipset. But motherboard manufacturers like Asus, ASRock, MSI, Biostar, they're all coming out with new motherboards. And yes, we are gonna be seeing a new Asus Republic of Gamers Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, which I will actually be doing a build with that. It's currently on the way. I do have, uh, a Ryzen CPU on the way as well, but we'll be doing a separate video and obviously a full build and benchmark of that. Now, AMD had promised a 40% IPC or instructions per clock improvement over Excavator, which again is the old, and we're gonna call it old because it really is old. I mean, it's like six years old technology on the AMD side. They promised us a 40% IPC improvement. They say they delivered 52%. That is a huge improvement. Uh, but anyway, these are all running the 14 nanometer process, eight core 16 threads, as I said. Now the uh, turbo clocks for these CPUs respectively are four gigahertz for the 1800X, 3.8 for the 1700X and 3.7 for the 1700X. Interestingly though, the amount of uh, TDP for the 1700 is 65 watts where the other two are 95. So I'm kind of curious what's different there and how they're actually saving uh, an, an additional almost 30% of power right there. Now, when it comes to the benchmarks, the 1800X is beating the 6900K uh, on Cinebench R15. The 1700X is beating the 6800K uh, and the 1700 is beating the 7700K. Now, some of you might be looking at that saying, well, wait a minute, that's not fair. Why is there an eight core CPU versus a six core CPU and another eight core versus a four core? Well, it's perfectly relevant because remember, these are price points that we are sort of comparing here where the $329 price point is cheaper on the 1700 than it is for the 7700K. And likewise with the 6800K being more expensive than the 1700X. So that makes these results very, very valid. Um, the only other test though that they offered any benchmarks on was the single threaded R15. Uh, Cinebench R15 with the 1800X versus the 6900K, which they were the exact same score. It would have been nice if they included the other two CPUs so that we could see if maybe there's fall off on those two where maybe single core performance isn't as good on those. So we'll have to wait for independent reviews. Um, and then Handbrake, 
uh, 4K encoding down to 1080p 30 at fast settings, the 1700 versus the 7700K, and it did it exactly 10 seconds faster than the 7700. So with all that said, obviously the performance per dollar is really good on this. So now let's go ahead and move into the part of the video where we talk about whether or not you should pre-order this. Now remember, I have not had any hands-on experience with this, so I'm speaking purely on the information that's available on the internet, which is the same information you pretty much have to rely on yourself. Uh, even though I will be doing full builds on this, I have not been any had any hands-on or even, even a single discussion with AMD, so I am completely in the dark on this just as you guys are. The issue here is pre-orders have opened up for this CPU prior to any independent reviewing or testing having been done. So you're having to really take the full word of AMD on the performance comparisons with very limited benchmarking samples that have been provided. Now the specs look really good on paper. The price is very hard to argue with. But the question is, how is it going to perform in all tasks like live streaming and video encoding for the content creator like myself or an aspiring creator like you maybe, uh, like I said, live streaming while gaming, what's gaming performance gonna be like? With the 52% IPC improvement, I would have to assume gaming is going to be pretty good as well. So whether or not you should pre-order really depends on your level of trust with not only AMD, Nvidia is guilty of putting, you know, best foot forwards too when it comes to particular benchmarks that they show. Intel, of course, doesn't really show anything. They've been very kind of hush-hush on any of their marketing stuff when it comes to desktop CPUs. It's kind of interesting. But I think they've gotten pretty complacent too that they've been in the lead for so long. But interestingly enough, Intel did, did put out a statement uh, today where they were, they say that they are very confident in their CPUs and their performance and that uh, anyone wanting more um, should be excited for what's coming down the, the, the pipeline with their eight, eighth gen Intel, which is kind of interesting because the fact that Intel even responded to this makes it sound like they are, not, I wouldn't say rattled, but they're definitely watching. That's what we need in the community and I'm happy to see that. Now I would be very leery of pre-ordering this because one, this is early adoption there's always gonna be growing pains with early adoptions. When X99 first came out and I got my first uh, X99 CPU, the 5960X, I had some issues. There were some BIOS issues, there were some compatibility issues, and I see no reason why that might not exist now. So if you're okay with the whole early adopter and having some of the bleeding edge technology problems that come along with that, then by all means, pre-order it but make sure you pre-order it from a retailer that will take it back from you if you decide to change your mind. Now I'm also of the mindset that a company needs to earn my money before I pre-order things. So personally, uh, I wouldn't pre-order this, but that's just me and that's a subjective way of thinking. I wanna see a company earn my money rather than giving them my money before I can get my hands on it. The other thing though that about pre-order is this is probably gonna be a very limited supply of CPUs. It's probably gonna be a very high demand. And if you wanna make sure you get it without there being a long wait list, which happens with like smartphones and stuff when they launch, then by all means pre-order it. Like I said, just make sure whoever you order it from will take it back if you change your mind, which of course with PC components, especially like CPUs and stuff, um, that's sometimes hard. Anyway, guys, it's time to go. I will be bringing you full Ryzen coverage, including full builds and benchmarks and all that stuff coming up here in the very near future. Uh, I just want to put this video out there because I was asked a lot today about my opinion on this. Um, and also two people asking why I wasn't there. Now, honestly, AMD messaged me. They felt bad. They thought that I wasn't planning on attending G GDC at all. So that they, they didn't send out the invite there, um, but they are sending me the stuff I need to be able to do my reviews. So no, there's no rift there. There's no AMD hates J or any of that stuff as the internet likes to make up. Uh, but with that said, guys, it's time to go. Those are my opinions and that's all they are. Take them for what they will. You can throw them out the window, listen to it and compare it to what others are saying and hopefully formulate your best opinion on what you should do, especially when it comes to, to pre-orders. That's a hard one. This is a hard one. This is, this is new, this is all new. So we don't have anything to really go by. I hope they do as well as they say they're gonna do. Time will tell. Thanks for watching, guys.